Thank you. I'm Sharmishtha Banerjee from University of Hyderabad. And uh, today I'll be telling you a small portion of uh, work that we are doing toward understanding uh, rewiring of metabolic networks in mycobacteria to understand their adaptive response. And while I tell you about that, I also am going to tell you about my journey uh, of as a teacher and developing my research career in university. I thank the organizers first for calling me to this platform because I'm associated with YIM for since 2010, where I myself have participated as a young investigators with all kinds of questions that uh, a day before uh, when I was interacting in one of the break uh, 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 sessions that uh, many of young investigators have, they have doubts about how to mentor, how to uh, you know, have a, a, a research lab going, the problems that uh, they face. So I had used this platform and this tremendously helped me. So uh, I thank uh, YIM platform for calling me once again to share my experience. Uh, presently, I'm a uh, professor at the Department of Biochemistry, and I joined university with uh, an experience of working in uh, bacterial systems doing biochemistry, and I also did a brief uh, um, postdoctoral uh, uh, you know, fellowship in the cancer uh, cell metastasis in Cleveland uh, Clinic Learner Research Center in USA. So these experiences have really been helpful in actually uh, you know, um, making me decide what am I going to start with when I join university. Uh, the, my experience with working in cancer cell uh, metastasis or metastasis in cancers, actually that's the first time I handled animals and that immediately made me realize that possibly this is something I'm not cut for. Not that I was against doing any kind of animal studies, but it is just that I realized that that is not my strength. And uh, while at the same time, it made me realize that uh, doing an animal model studies in animal model will become inevitable. And that would also mean that I would require to collaborate. So uh, these experiences, with these experiences, when I joined University of Hyderabad, I decided to do mycobacteriology. I wanted to study, go back to uh, uh, studying mycobacteria and uh, uh, its various ways by this, uh, by which this pathogen has developed its survival strategies. But at the same time, I was starting completely fresh because I was not taking anything directly from my either my, uh, you know, uh, my uh, postdoctoral uh, work or not nothing directly from my uh, PhD research uh, as well. But a lot of experience of handling mycobacteria. So I started my lab on understanding. Uh, molecular pathogenesis and immunology of mycobacteria and added another dimension to it where uh, which came actually during a conversation with certain clinicians and as I realized that I should start a strong collaborative network I started with that and I realized that HIV mycobacteria uh, synergism is becoming a, uh, uh, is, is, a, is, a, is an area which uh, people require to really uh, look at that why, uh, you know, what kind of uh, mycobacterial factors uh, trigger a response in such a way that it becomes very conducive, gives a conducive environment for HIV to propagate. So I added the dimension and I started with uh, understanding mycobacteria during both mono infection and co infection. Uh, while I will tell about my a part of this work and about my research a bit later. Let me also uh, tell you uh, about my career in university. I added the word research because career in university has been is very, very, very satisfying because the only thing which I was very sure about that I wanted to teach. Uh, anywhere uh, I had joined, I think teaching was an important component that I wanted. So uh, establishing a research uh, career in um, the ecosystem of university where teaching is the primary job has, has its challenges and some of the challenges I'll share with you. I joined in December 2006, like that's a long time back. And I must say that university, at least our university has really come a long way and has done tremendously well uh, since then. But there are certain challenges which possibly are uh, still stays because of the nature of the ecosystem. So as I was, if you call them challenges, 
while teaching was is, was my primary uh, uh, you know aim uh, and i enjoyed teaching but also that was the most challenging thing that i started with it is very time consuming especially in the formative years and uh, you have only that much time if you if you want to do research as well you are when i say teaching i'm not only referring to just going to a going to a you know class and delivering a lecture you require to spend hours for one hour lecture to the tune of seven at least seven to eight hours of preparation teaching material read the background uh, make your uh, uh, you know slides and besides that you also require to have a number of evaluations done and if it your class is very big it is a uh, uh, going to be challenging and you still have to do a very effective and very uh, correct job uh, teaching also means that you have to continuously talk to students you have to permit them to come to your office any time you have to ask them you have to let them ask their doubts at any point you have to be available to them at all the time and uh, this is means that you are you are actually giving a lot of time to your to your teaching and you may end up feeling that you hardly have time for research which may be true for the first few uh, years at least uh, and at that point of time uh, it is better not to think that my colleagues or my you know or my friends who are in institute have really taken off you just have to have peace with the with the you know uh, with the fact that you may be taxing for longer time but you will take off uh, for sure uh, uh, slowly yet another challenge is the the support the financial support that you may expect in a university ecosystem for the for setting up your research lab which to this day is fairly limited as we understand university funding mainly goes for teaching various kind of uh, you know uh, teach, the financial support goes various to teaching programs and individual research or individual research labs they require they have they get some support but it's very limited and you have to depend upon completely yourself and extramural grants to uh, establish your lab that is challenging because as i said in the initial years you require to generate lab that would mean you have to uh, generate funds you have to you have to really really spend a lot of time and then you have to write an effective uh, uh, grant to get uh, make sure that you get the money and uh, then only you can start up lab start up a lab to me the lab space was never not a problem but uh, if i more gen make it more generalized i'm sure that some of the university may have a space problem or allotment of space at the uh, beginning of your career which can sometime be challenging and sometime be taxing uh, especially when if you are really very eager to start a research career in a university setup uh, that also goes that uh, uh, you know uh, any kind of technical or office uh, or any kind of office support you to be given to independent research lab is is most of the time is not there in university that would mean my lab attendant also for my lab attendant i have to generate the manpower uh, fund that would only come if you write a write a grant and uh, the first few years you really are scared because you are you may have submitted a grant with after a couple of a few years and you are you are still trying to create a balance between teaching and research you don't have an office staff to do that you have to do that for everything yourself and yet worry about the manpower so that part is actually challenging at the very uh, the formative year and uh, it is at that time i think my mentors uh, professor hasan dr shekhar mande uh, my uh, professor aparao then my uh, msc uh, teachers uh, professor razi professor viroz ahmed i would continuously talk to these people because i was trying to really strike a balance and at that time i still remember my teacher i mean my msc teacher said sharmishta you have gone there to teach you first make sure that you do that well your research will come and uh, that gave me a lot of patience and uh, i decided that instead of making a glorious mess of both let me do it slowly so uh, uh, today i can say that yes i may have taken off slowly if, uh, or you know uh, a little bit late but uh, we are doing fairly well and uh, 
also, uh, uh, slowly you will also see that a good amount of administrative responsibility starts from the very beginning, be it with a very small amount of work like making a timetable or addressing some of the student issues. But this amount of administrative responsibility only slowly keeps increasing as your career progresses. So uh, that is something, some, these are some of the challenges that you will always initially face when you are trying to establish a research career in university. And I, as I said, that soon I found that uh, while I was struggling to uh, establish my lab, buying its my furniture with the startup grant, I feel that they still have generously funded us. I was almost given a tune to uh, uh, 10 lakhs or so in two installments where I could buy my own furnitures, almiras, and some small equipment. But uh, this challenge of uh, you know startup fund has remained with university. And if I'm talking about my university, I am sure uh, other universities face the same problem. Also, the state university may be uh, facing a, a bigger challenge and people who join there uh, for uh, a career will face a challenge there. But as I said, maybe a few years delayed, but I still felt that it was a good idea that I concentrated on my teaching and slowly established my research lab because eventually I found that they complement each other so much. Uh, and uh, I, so today in the present state, uh, with my lab, I'm very excited to be in university. And uh, the reason I'm excited to be in, in a university ecosystem is because it gives me a lot of freedom, a lot of flexibility to be a as a teacher as well as uh, in my research. Uh, I, I found that I could use this opportunity to uh, develop a lot of, uh, you know, get, bring a lot of new things to my courses, bring a lot of new ways to evaluate, uh, interacted with students and figured out that uh, uh, how, uh, you know, what are the, their, which facets is, is, is their strength, which facets are their weakness, and, uh, and, and oriented my, my teaching, my courses uh, to that. And, uh, a university set setup gives you that flexibility. If you are within a larger framework of your course, how you carry out their course, what extra topics you include, what ways do you ways you evaluate, whether you want to have a group discussion, a paper presentation, a flash quiz, uh, uh, or any kind of uh, you know uh, thing, this is something which which is which is uh, permitted, and that is that actually evolves you. As a person, and eventually, I also realized that it evolved me as a researcher. So, uh, mm, uh, the liberty of including a vast audience is yet another very exciting thing in the university. And when I talk about, I'm not talking about only interdisciplinary. This is a platform which also uh, helped me talk to students across, uh, 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 you know, various uh, um, disciplines which extends to humanities, which extends to uh, you know, social sciences, languages. And uh, uh, I could connect myself. I could get associated with a number of uh, students club. And I felt that their excitement uh, uh, started rushing on me. And in asking very, uh, very uh, nice questions, and uh, I could use that platform to send a message that uh, Possibly, especially in biology, we should stop thinking that we can do away with mathematics, physics, and chemistry. So I think uh, I think that is something which wherever I met students, whichever platform I could meet students, I could convey this because we had both the humanities, then we had health psychology students, we had language students, we had history students. At the same time, we have science students who are all trying to convey their work to each other. And and that actually uh, you know, mm, helped us think beyond our own sciences. It uh, uh, gave me a, an opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, as I felt that as, as a mentor, I developed uh, much better because I was in a university setup. And uh, um, like, for instance, when I was talking to all this, a number of uh, students from various disciplines, uh, we just thought that we should float this idea that uh, send different students to 
an historical place. I said, go to Golconda. You go that take students from history department, students from physics, students from chemistry, students from uh, biology, and students from social sciences, and look at that uh, particular monument from all aspects. And it had it has to offer it has it can offer something to everyone. And we can develop this in, it's into a kind of project which is fun and which can also help learn uh, the science students as well as the, uh, the students of other uh, you know, disciplines to communicate with each other. And more importantly, the, the a notion which I always felt that sciences students tend to think that other disciplines may not be as important. They started understanding the importance of such interdisciplinary approaches. Uh, when it came to research, I felt that I myself found a very important uh, integration in my own research and uh, in a very recent uh, uh, project of ours, which uh, involves development of a vaccine formulation for poultry. We have incorporated, when I was talking to our certain professors from our anthropology department, we found that uh, and this, there is so much, such less work has been done with respect to the social aspect of it that uh, because uh, we felt that rampant use of antibiotic in poultry can be one of the reasons why there is a development, there, there can, there's a development of drug resistance uh, bacteria in the environment. And uh, there was very little, this little uh, information, data on that, and they, we thought of collaborating with them. And, they want us to, want, uh, to help us in understanding at what stage, how much, why there is such kind of rampant usage of uh, antibiotic in the poultry section, especially in and around Hyderabad, at what stage of economic uh, you know, condition do the you know, farmers, there is, they resort to such kind of uh, you know, uh, 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 ideas that they can use antibiotic why don't they go for any kind of vaccine for poultry? All these questions, unless we have a baseline information, and if that can be fed to my research, I would I could at least understand that when I'm making a formulation, what is the best way the farmers would want to apply? What kind of route I should the vaccine should be uh, you know um, injected or if, uh, vaccine should be applied so that it can be it will be accepted more uh, by the farmers. So I felt that university has this setup, has this diversity, which uh, helps you be more uh, inclusive in your thought process. And it helped, really helped me to evolve as a mentor. At, and uh, apart from as a teacher, as a researcher, uh, it really helped me evolve as a mentor. Uh, and while uh, this whole bunch of uh, students here are my PhD scholars, which possibly all of us, we guide, we mentor, and they feel very bad eventually when they make it uh, to some position or other, they are all different. But I was very happy that uh, there are several students who were associated with me, either directly with my lab or with me indirectly as a student of the department of the school or who came for a small uh, short-term project uh, intern. Uh, I could help them in um, understanding their strengths. And many of them, like I have, uh, they, they uh, took up uh, the usual uh, professions, like some became faculty, but other could also go to a diverse uh, career and uh, which they felt uh, they would prefer rather than going to uh, research and going for a PhD degree and are fairly doing well. And I'm also a must mention, and this is not an exhaustive list, I didn't have a photographs of all of them, but eventually I found that many of them had this this hidden thing in, in, in them uh, that they can use, may not be as a career, but as an outlet, and which also can help them in their research career. Many of these students who got associated with us, one of them, I think uh, she especially wanted to I realize that she had such managerial skills in the lab that eventually now, because of her various health situations, she could not be active in science, but her managerial aspects, which developed in the lab, she identified that and as now has a business of her uh, own. Many of these students also said that apart from research, they would want to be educationalist. And by educationalist, I felt that they also wanted that, uh, mm, that, is there something in Rose you want to tell? 
Uh, Sharmishta, so we are, uh, so could you just wrap it up a little bit faster because I think we're running out of time. Okay, yeah, I will do that. I'll not, uh, I'll reduce my size part a bit because I thought this yeah, is a okay. platform which I require to. Okay. How much time do I have? Two minutes. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, I think I felt, so some of the take home from my experience is that if you want to be in the university and you join a university, if you enjoy teaching, uh, you evolve a topic which consider your time, consider your funding, consider your infrastructure, because your methodology would depend upon that and the amount of people available to you. You, wherever you feel that you have, you can, you can collaborate and that can help you overcome your limitation. So I will just give a quick example of my research where collaboration has helped us in, in uh, uh, understanding a much wider uh, global question, which has laid uh, several baseline information in my research uh, um, in my lab. And uh, I will go directly to the part which I uh, thought I will, uh, I will discuss. So we are studying the stress adaptation in mycobacteria. And we have taken into consideration both the saprophytic mycobacteria as well as a pathogenic mycobacteria and have tried to understand that what kind of uh, metabolic rewiring takes place when they are changing, when the micro micro environmental cues change in terms of the various kind of stress. We applied, uh, um, uh, you know, to uh, proton NMR as well as LCMS, and I collaborated to uh, for these with the ICER Pune uh, and NCCS uh, uh, Pune, as well as with CCMB, Dr. Anand Patel, as well as the uh, the outcome of that when we could identify several of the metabolites which could can distinguish the various kinds of stress adaptation in both uh, pathogenic as well as non-pathogenic mycobacteria helped us in identifying a completely new pathway of methylated amine biosynthesis, which otherwise I could not, would not have uh, been able to do alone. And uh, at the same time in pathogenic mycobacteria, uh, with the help of uh, 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 Dr. Mande, uh, Dr. Shekhar Mande and Dr. Sharmila Mande's group who work on making uh, genome scale metabolic models as well as uh, flux balance uh, analysis, helped us understand very new uh, approach towards understanding of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, stress adaptation in pathogenic mycobacteria, giving us several leads in the form of uh, uh, very critical enzymes that are responsible for uh, adapting to various kinds of stress. There are some examples which says that, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, your anaplerosis pathway, which feeds into TCA cycle, uh, TCA cycle during starvation, um, your as uh, uh, as your uh, uh, the way uh, various kind of uh, acidic stress uh, that are taken care by uh, L-asparaginases rather than ureases because in general the concept in the field was that urease activity is the one which actually takes is is very important for uh, uh, acidic stress adaptation while that is there when the mutant of urease was created uh, urease upfront created it it did not really uh, uh, you know uh, increase the persistence or decrease the persistence now we know that possibly it is flux through the l asparaginase and not uh, really to through urease when there's an immediate uh, adaptation and at the same time we are also debating that if there is a new pathway which can come through uh, proton quenching by various kind of sugar alcohols, which we found are tremendously upregulated during acidic stress. So this kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, information we could uh, come, uh, which has given us a lot of baseline information. And with, to me, that means that I have a lot of short-term projects that can be given to various kind of master students, interns, which are less consumable, exhaustive, and which are biochemistry driven and which would not involve handling uh, pathogenic mycobacteria. And hence, I can also train a number of uh, uh, you know, uh, scholars uh, or from various uh, cadres. This has also created and opened gates for new collaborations because we are able to now generate a battery of attenuated mycobacterial strains, which can help us develop various kind of models. And there are people both from industry as well as 
from the academia they have come forward to test their uh, you know uh, uh, either cell culture based or uh, uh, organoid based models uh, towards that and has opened up gates for new collaborations so all this i uh, will summarize that the my new my my the research aspects which evolved uh, i uh, has come only because i gave teaching an uh, importance and eventually had imbibed some part of that whatever uh, i taught into my research uh, could develop a doable topic and i collaborated uh, to overcome those limitations in a university setup uh, there are challenges is with respect to generation of fund but i feel that when a day in a day when nothing goes correct in a lab uh, if i take one good class i think i come back happy so uh, this is what i have to say about my journey uh, i have to really cut the, uh, you know rush through my times but i think this platform had me more to talk about my experience thank you and i'll take questions i must thank all my collaborators this is i hope i have not missed and i also thank my the support that i have always enjoyed thank you so Sorry, uh, i've taken some more time mm. Uh, well, I think this talk was going very, very well, you know, extremely nice, but sorry, in the interest of time and we need to take a few questions. So I'll just quickly read out one a very interesting question that was asked by, uh, you know, Dhananjay from, uh, uh, so I'm just going to read out his question. So very pertinent and uh, interesting question in today's uh, educational context. Many students come to masters with a bookish mindset. Through what tools and techniques do you instill independent thought and analytical thinking when you teach or mentor? Yes, it's a very uh, yeah, it's indeed is very nice. And so, uh, yeah, couple of things. Uh, first, what you can do is uh, now and then you can in your normal teaching you can bring up some uh, interesting research, and uh, you can discuss that. and leave the leave a research discussion at a point when you say what would you do after this information now that this information is there with you what would you, what would you do how would you approach this particular question now so uh, now and then we do that uh, 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 in our classroom outside our classroom uh, um, uh, sometime making very informal groups so we have a club called entropy where we have this kind of discussions where not only the textbook topics anybody can bring up any interesting topic and we try to discuss that most of the time the way to break their uh, stereotype thinking is to tell them so from here now what because most of these people are going to start their research from the available information that is present today and there is a lot of it so we try to help them in thinking with the available information that how they should further think in uh, you know developing that area so this also it goes hand in hand with their project present uh, with their uh, paper presentations this is a part of the evaluation you can divide them in group so you can have your own way to you know evolve that uh, system where you can drive their curiosity assess how much they can think push them to think think a little bit and uh, possibly that should work yeah thanks a lot for uh, so we will take one uh, live question so priyanka uh, if you want to ask a live live question are you there yeah i'm here thank you um, So I have a question for you. That um, can you please comment on how being a university faculty um, compared to a research scientist, right? So how that has facilitated your, you know, community approaches? Because I, I I missed the last part. Your voice broke. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was asking that you know, uh, being a faculty position, you are in a faculty position in a university, and your position compared to a actual research, you know, hardcore research scientist in a research institute. Hmm. That that. does compared you know um it has facilitated your community outreach approaches because as a faculty you meet more people you directly teach people you know interact more people so how does that improved or facilitated your community approach uh, you know outreach approaches yes i think being in university as you correctly pointed out that we do meet a uh, uh, students from all spheres and uh, uh, you 
get the chance to interact with them at the same time um, as a as a as a university we also have a, a certain outreach program in the form of various clubs that we encourage it's a student driven club encourage them to uh, run and we uh, further uh, go out to uh, we further encourage these students to go and teach in in schools in government schools and uh, or, or bring them there uh, bring them to university we have various kinds of days we spend a week uh, telling them about various kind of experiments make them visit our lab and uh, uh, while these activities some of these activities outreach activities are also taken up by many of the uh, you know um, uh institutes they do but i think uh, uh, we uh, our outreach is because the spheres from which the various students come and they become our node and further we uh, we can reach to more number of people uh, many of the schools be it a management school we go to we can go to villages we can go to uh, uh, you know uh, and uh, interact with them Uh, be it in form of an entrepreneurship or a woman entrepreneurship or encouraging uh, uh, girl child education. So I think these kind of things uh, has uh, uh, helped me, and it, it uh, university has given the opportunity. Uh, my worry is if had had if I had been in institute, whether I would be even thinking about these things. I am thinking today because I am in a setup which has helped me in thinking about these things.